So, now we should point out, Alex, you, you, you did win the Pucci Award in Spain yes, for Dog Biscuits. I and, did. and the Cartoonist Studio Prize. Was that mentioned? That's true. That's true. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, you know, just winning awards all over the place. And, and so are you. Yeah, yeah. Well. Eisner's, you know, Harvey nomination. Yes, yeah, Harvey just, nomination. Mm -hmm. We're just fucking killing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to vote for you in the Harvey Awards, but they gave me a, a broken link in the email. And uh, I asked I asked them about that about three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, and they still haven't gotten back to me. So I would I would love to vote for you on that. I'll have a word with them. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I, I would appreciate that. Bastards. Yes. No broken links. It's 2021. No broken links. Yeah, any, any comics professionals out there, whatever that means, if you could register and vote for me for the Harvey Awards, that would be fantastic. I'm, I'm campaigning and grubbing for votes quite aggressively. <laughs> Well, you deserve it. You deserve you deserve to win every award. I just so, like yeah. statues. So I've got my Angle M statue there. I just love statues. Yes. Yeah, how you well, doing? I was gonna ask you how you doing. I'm but great. I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm great. We're, we're both great. Yes. We're, we're live I'm here in, yes. in beautiful Seattle. Yes. Drinking some alcohol that I yeah. uh, have haven't had since the fourth of July. And yeah, I'm enjoying I, it very much. I don't drink much, but we've got some black currant vodka yeah. shanties Delicious. or whatever they are. Delicious. That Jack, Jack made for us. Yeah. His, his wife. Yeah, my lovely wife, Jack, yes. uh, made us some lovely drinks. Get yes. us all uh, well lubricated for this uh, hot chat. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Thank, um, you, thank you very much. I would like to start out with a question for you. Um, I suppose the most pressing question that I've ever wanted to ask you is... Um, what do people from back home in Tasmania think of your success? I think they just think I'm a cunt. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> no, I, you know, yeah, yeah I, you know, I talk to some friends there occasionally, and I think they're impressed. I, I hope they're mm -hmm. impressed. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I enjoyed my time in, in Hobart and the, the noise music scene and the comic scene, and and there's friends of mine. Uh, like Michael Hawkins uh, from Tasmania, who does a uh, Glom Press right now. They just won the big Australian Comics Prize. Oh, there's a press in Tasmania. Okay. Yeah, well, well, they're in yeah. Melbourne now with uh, young Mark Pearson, okay. uh, a Melbourne cartoonist. So, you know, Melbourne and Tasmania kind of joined together. But right. Yeah. No, we have a lot of successful cartoonists from Tasmania, sort of, or, or oh, two. Okay. There's two. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm sure they're happy for me. But oh, good. Okay. You know, I well, I suppose know. the reason I ask is because, uh, because as I've recently climbed in success, I, I felt mm. like I felt like some weirdness from from people from from uh, where I grew up. No, Commerce City, Colorado. That's oh. that's that's the city from uh, that that Dog the Bounty Hunter is from. Oh, that's where nice. I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> you so, go to school with him. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't think he attended school there, but it's not, somehow he lived there. But yeah, that's basically where I came from. So I, I just a little bit of weirdness from people um, well, that I that yeah. I felt as I, I've become more successful. I think a lot of people hate me and they're jealous of my success, but yeah. I love that. I, I feed on it. So yeah, 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 I love it. You have to. You, you have, have to to be yeah. able to to because otherwise it would cripple. You. Yeah, I drink their tears. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a mix. It makes you more powerful. It's a mix of intense, crippling self hatred and mm -hmm. being very self critical, but also mm -hmm. just just loving it and just just yeah, just, just loving it. Yes, yeah. you you almost have to um, get off on being a provocateur to be able to even thrive in arts nowadays. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to get your jolly somehow. Yes. Yeah, got to skirt because... the edge, ride the knife's edge. Exactly, because that's that's kind of what Crisis Zone did. Is that um, you did mention in the, which I must say, a uh, little side note: all the questions that I have written down here for you were answered in the extensive director's notes in the back of the book. Uh -huh. So, but I'm I'm still going to ask you them anyway. So I'm uh, surprised you read that. Uh, it, it was designed to not be read. Was, I almost didn't because yeah. I thought that you were just going to be like reviewing what what happened maybe for like somebody that doesn't have visual abilities uh for somebody else to read to them or something yeah. uh just like reviewing exactly what happened in the in the panels but it was actually really engrossing well, there were a lot of tangents i I, see, yeah. I i barely remember what i wrote because it was i was on deadline mm -hmm. i just went nuts and just like wrote all this handwritten dense text 
And it was kind of intended to be a manic outpouring mm -hmm. and just this impenetrable block of shit. And I, I didn't mm -hmm. really think anyone would read it, but you know, it the was, first person. it was, uh, it was actually, I, I didn't, honestly, I thought I was going to like start reading it and then stop, but <laughs> I actually couldn't stop reading it because there were so many little nuggets in there of, uh, of like what went on behind the scenes in your, in your head mm -hmm. when you're writing the book. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I guess that I bodes well. It. I guess other people may enjoy it as well. I highly recommend anybody read the director's commentary in the back. Any questions that you come up with while you're reading Crisis on, he'll, he'll answer them for you in the back. It's a nice rainy day at TV, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. suppose. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things that Seattle. you mentioned in the director's commentary uh, Hit me. was... A friend of yours drinking bong water. Oh, Doug. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Doug. I actually viscerally gagged when I read that because bong water smell is my least favorite smell in the whole world. Yeah. And uh, I just want to know, like, did he get high from that? Well, I mean, I drank it too. I mean, I tried it. Um, it was wow. disgusting. He put it in the fridge and then put some cordial in it, like some juice. Um, uh -huh. And it didn't mask the taste at all. It was disgusting. And no, I don't think it works. Nothing can mask the taste of but that. We were like 15. Um, oh, 15, okay. Yeah, okay. Doug and I, like, we made a comic together in like grade eight or nine called Comic Book. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was Comic Book, very succinct. I think John, the, 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 the pedophile that did the Ren and Stimpy cartoons. <laughs> I think John Kay? He had a book yeah. called Comic Book, but I think we maybe predated that. Um, right. So he ripped us off. He ripped off some children, not the first time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <coughs> um, but yeah, Doug and I did a comic together, and yeah. then he was crippled in a really brutal rugby accident. We used to play mm -hmm. illicit rugby games on the, the pitch, and he, his right. arm, like his bone, popped out of his arm, and he, he was out of school. But yeah, he used to drink the bone water. Okay. His dad was really creepy as well. Uh, he used to walk around pantsless in the house. So I'd, I'd stay over at Doug's house, and his dad would just walk around like Donald Duck with his dick playing about. <laughs> Um, they, they call that, uh, uh, what do they call that? Um, oh, they have a, they have a term for that when you're just walking around like Donald Duck with your dick out. I can't yeah, remember. Donald that. Ducking it or Porky Pigging it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. jean Jean-Pierre uh, Castre used to do that. She used to make a lot of jokes about that. You know, rest yes. in peace. Jean -Jean. Oh, shirt dicking it. That's what. That's shirt what, dicking. Shirt yeah. dicking it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what it's called. It's you're not appropriate around your child's friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Um, on that note, I did have a, a question about, um, like, I can gather from what I know about you that you grew up somewhat in poverty. Oh, poor as fuck. Yeah, you you wiped your ass with junk mail. Yeah, is what I learned. What I learned from your uh, director's commentary in the back. Kmart catalogs predominantly. Yes, yeah. yes. So um, what I would, what I'm dying to know is like. How did you, how did you become such a masterful artist? And and <laughs> oh, at the at, you are, and at the same time, like, how do you have such a great vocabulary? Like the the way you write, you're you're a great writer on top of being a great artist too. You're really flattering the shit out of me here, Alex. You know? <laughs> yes, but but also like uh, like. <laughs> I forgot what I was I mean, going to say. Well, no, well, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, just reading. I mean... That's what I was going to ask. It's like, what did what did you read when you were a kid? Well, I, mean, I, I dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. I, I just kept reading stuff, just anything I could get my hands on. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'd go to the secondhand bookstore and get whatever comics I could get my hand on. And yeah. lots of novels. I know Stephen King novels and just... Just okay. random, just anything I could get my hands on. I was a poor kid, latchkey yeah. kid. My mother worked in bars. She mm -hmm. was, you know, away. I was spending nights alone or with my schizophrenic grandmother. She was not a lot of help. You know, she was yeah. busy freaking out eating cigarettes. Like, so yeah, I, I just, yeah. Oh, thank you, audience. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just read. I, I think you can just teach yourself. You just, yeah, it, absolutely. You're voracious. Yeah. And to mm -hmm. my mother's credit, you know, throughout bouts of heroin overdoses, mm -hmm. she bought me a lot of books. She was quite loving. Um, and, you know, yeah, you know, I've had a lot of troubles with my mother over the years, but I think she was a good mother. She tried her yeah. best and mm -hmm. she always bought me lots of nice books and, and kept me literate. And it's just always been an interest of mine, an escape, really, you know, just to escape into fantasy and, uh, yeah. 
and you know i've just been self-taught with the comics so yeah I I, I I think I'm shit. I mean, I look at my drawings and they repulse me. It's like garbage. And yeah. I, I, I rush well, everything. Yeah. I, I work all day and I work really hard, but I also yeah. rush everything. So yeah. no, nothing ever satisfies me. But that's mm -hmm. fine. You move on to the next thing. You have right. to just pound shit out. Mm -hmm. And it, it's that poverty. I grew up in intense poverty, so I'm just like, I was desperate to get out of it. So I just work my fucking ass mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. and just have that passion to, to dig out of that hole. Right. Yeah. I've, I've done it. Well, you say you say you rush your art, but to anybody that's looking at it except you, that's not apparent at all. It looks like it that the kind this the same effort that you make would take anybody else in the world several days, and you and yeah. you did all these pages for Crisis Zone in a single day. Well, yeah, I mean, full backgrounds to my credit. Mm -hmm. I see all these motherfuckers prancing around a line. There's no backgrounds. It's all talking yeah, heads. Yeah, exactly. Lazy, exactly. lazy motherfuckers. Draw the fucking And they background. take a week to draw a single yeah. panel. Provide a sense of place, you feckless cunts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't even, honestly, like, unless the writing is, like, beyond what, like, any other comic can achieve, I'm not going to be intrigued by a comic yeah. that doesn't, doesn't include background. Why is it a comic? Do prose. Why yeah. are you even bothering providing exactly. a visual element when it's fucking nothing? Yeah, and then there's yeah. these people that, that take up like three quarters of the panel with narration. Yeah, too much. Oh my it's, god. It's like mainstream superhero comics. There's all this mm. kinetic action going on, fly kicking, and yeah. it's just bogged down in all this text and it, it slows mm -hmm. down the pacing. Mm -mm. You need I, I like to keep my you know my dialogue minimal so things can move. And, yeah. Exactly. Exactly, and you and you say that uh, that in crisis crisis zone you actually had to add a little bit more dialogue to fit within the yeah. ten panel. More than I would like, I was doing split triangular right. panels because mm -hmm. of the ten I panel did that limit. Too. Yeah, you, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time as I was doing crisis zone, you were doing dog biscuits, right. which was, you know, as people were enjoying crisis zone, I was enjoying dog biscuits. I was like, thank God, someone else is doing this. Because yes. it, was, it was hard work all day. I, I do 12-hour days. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I salute you for providing entertainment also for people. You entertained the shit out of me with Dog Biscuits. Thank you. I mean, a lot of I'm people, so glad. A lot of people really love Dog Biscuits and Crisis Zone. Yeah. And, a, and yeah. another comic that I'm clueless as to why people would mention it or enjoy it, I won't say the name of it here, but there was another oh yes yeah, okay, you know what okay, i'm talking yep. about yeah we're not going to mention that no name. we're not going to mention uh, that. yes on that note um <laughs> something that i'm dying to know is um my work ethic i i am aware uh i have an insane work ethic but yeah, you do. but my endurance isn't quite as like intense as yours and i'm just wondering like where do you get that endurance to like write out all that narration after you and and like those those additional panels that you that you added to the to your comments like where do you get that sense of endurance and it's like a strength that you have to have like climbing up a mountain i think i'm just mentally ill yeah yeah <laughs> I, I it always broke me like uh, mm -hmm. yeah i write in the commentary like uh, i had a kid on the way my first kid so yeah. I had a deadline. I, I really had to like get those extra panels done. Like doing mm -hmm. the 10 panels a day, the crisis zone during serialization was brutal. And then uh -huh. I was doing like 20 or 30 a day for all these extra panels. Yeah. But throughout the run, I was trying to like, if I had a few extra hours, like, okay, I'll do a few extra panels. But then that just all fell to the wayside and I had to do them all in January. So it was like 500 panels written you know, I had notes, but I basically had to write them and, you know, pencil, ink, and color them over the course yeah. of a month. I set myself an insane deadline, and I just did it. I, I like militaristic, insane work. I like, you mm -hmm. know, becoming a robot, having a goal, and just doing it. Mm -hmm. That's the only mm -hmm. way to do it. Yeah. You've got deadlines to meet. You've got to put food on the table for baby. You just yep. got to do it. Yep. I don't know. I, I, I just go into a headspace. Thank you, Darren. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I think that does come from uh, people who grow up not having everything. Yeah. Do you have more of a sense of of needing to just do what needs to be done instead of just like 
oh, I, I can't do this. I don't feel like doing this today. You, you know? just got to do it. My mother worked mm -hmm. like five jobs at times growing up. She was like, she'd clean the, the troughs, the piss troughs at the army barracks and the, the soldiers would shit in the, in the piss troughs. And I saw her there, you know, cleaning it up and working mm -hmm. hard for me and, you know, trying to get out. Like, you just got to do it. And I yeah. love it as well. It's the passion. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure as well, like, during the pandemic, doing dog biscuits, it's an outlet. It's something oh, yes. to focus on. Oh, to, yes. You know. Mm -hmm. Dog biscuits was definitely an escape for me. Yeah. And it, it held, held me together. And I wish I was still working on a comic right now. I'm working on other projects right now. But if I wasn't, I would definitely be in, in another comic. Yeah. It's an escape. And it's the dopamine hit of providing something every day for, for mm -hmm. the readers. It's like having a TV show. It was like we had, yeah. it's like we we're running our own Saturday Night Live. Better, better than a TV show because you're you're commenting on the things that are happening on that day. Yeah, it's yeah. so immediate, and there's no other art form that does that with such immediacy. Oh, man, we fucking smashed it last year. Mm -hmm. We made all these other cartoonists look like fucking clowns. Mm -hmm. Like we really, just, yeah. like we stepped the fuck up. USO mm -hmm. show, wartime fucking artists on the fucking front lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a round of applause. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I applaud us. Yeah. I applaud us. But we also hate ourselves. That's the reason why we do what we do. I guess so. Looking for that validation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I was just watching a John Waters interview yesterday, and somebody's like, where do you get the confidence? And he's like, "I filmmakers don't have any confidence. That's why we're constantly seeking validation from our audience. Like, yeah. the, we, we're the least confident people that there are. Yeah, it's like comedians. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they're all depressed losers, desperate mm -hmm. for daddy's attention. Exactly. And, you, mm -hmm. know, and you, you temper the sadness with humor. You, you excise the demons. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What was your daily routine while you were working on crisis stuff <laughs> just just get up and fucking start mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. I, I you know i like to like you know my, my wife was working uh from home you know like home office type situation so you know she'd get to work you know like nine to five and, and me too i just treated it like an office job and i, I yeah. like to finish by five or six mm -hmm. and then in the evening we'd have dinner and watch tv and we'd grill or whatever like have a nice time and you know, I like to balance being a sane workaholic with being a present spouse. Yeah. So that's very important. You know, you so, don't want to yeah. be like Stephen King up in the attic, like mm. ready to come down and rage on your family. No. And some nights, you know, it's like, look, it's a really complicated one. I have to draw these crowd scenes and riot scenes. Like, you know, I'd be working until midnight and, you know, I felt mm -hmm. like shit about it. And it yeah. was painful. Yes. Some days, I, I guess you as well, you didn't want to do it. No, but there was this absolutely not. There was an obligation to the audience. I kept yeah. getting messages from people like, "Oh, it means so much to me. Like this brightens my day. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking locked down in Italy, shitting in a bucket, and like it's <laughs> you know, like, the, all that gives me joy is your horrible fucking comments." Yeah, there were there were some comments uh, sometimes that were like, "Oh my, oh my god, um, I hope I'm not like holding your entire life together just with my art. Like, please, like." <laughs> Please be okay. Uh, I yeah. had I had a I had a woman message me and, and she said that um, that because of dog biscuits she decided to um, break up with her boyfriend and fuck her boss. Wow. Um, <laughs> and it was the best thing she ever did. And I didn't hear anything from her for a little while after that. Uh, if you're listening, I appreciate you reaching out to me about that. That was very interesting. Yeah, that's heavy um, shit. A, a lot of people yeah. were sending me like heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. and I felt like the world's therapist, or you know, it's yeah. a, a, a small, you know, small portion of the world. We were, yeah. we were caregivers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like yes. you know, all these nurses making TikTok videos. Like that was, we were doing that in a way. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like we were, we were the the, the nurses, uh, the emotional nurses of everybody. I, I felt like motherfucking Patch Adams. At many <laughs> intervals. Is, is that why Patch Adams made its way into uh, into um, Crisis Zone? He um, did? Yes. Didn't he? What, really? Oh, wait. No, I think I might be mixing it up with something else I consumed they, they, in the last week. They dressed up as clowns for an okay. OnlyFans. Okay, game. yeah. It was something to do with a, a webcam. 
Uh, mm. One of one of the one of the webcam like OnlyFans things. See, I forget. You know, okay, yeah, I think know. there was my uh, uh, um like one panel mention of Patch Adams. See, I think there may have been. I think Owl said like, "Did you like the Patch Adams oh, moment?" Oh yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You are correct. Yes. Oh yes, score for Alex yes. Graham. Yes, Grace is going super fan. Score for Alex Graham. No, just freshly read the book. See, yes, see, I I read I read the entire book. See, I haven't read the whole book, like. I don't well, know how it yes. reads as a whole. I, I did all the extra panels and I kind of read it as this big amorphous block. It's hard. It's what? hard yeah. as the person that made it. I, yeah, I bridged it together with these bridging panels in between yeah. each episode and it all seemed mm -hmm. to make sense. But at the end, I was too exhausted to even really know what I was doing. I, I had to, yeah. I, I stopped doing it and then I just had to start building a nursery basically and just yeah. Like yeah, providing you, for my family. Like, you, you, you. Uh, ended crisis zone on the internet but then you immediately started drawing the extra two panels per page which i have to say i cannot believe like how well those two act extra panels per page work it's like uh, it's like doing a puzzle because you have to add that extra content between this scene and that scene and like some some of those two extra panels actually like elevate the page like way 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 success a lot. yes success. yes i mean yeah in a lot of instances there were notes like in the two blank panels at the bottom so of the you page. were you were planning for it. i would okay. leave some notes like oh you know booger trips over a chord right and, like it goes into this like you know you've been a lot of it i didn't and i just had to make it up and kind of like oh fuck how am i going to bridge this so yeah, yeah. I, I wake up in the morning and just like I just block them all out and just like mm -hmm. and then just go and just that's some major major problem solving like yeah. like cerebral shit. That's that's exhausting to even a, imagine. A big dirty puzzle. And then after you were finished with all of that, you went and did like twenty. Pa I, I I'm not sure exactly how many pages you did, but like twenty pages of handwritten director's commentary which like i had to put my glasses on to even even read yeah. because it's it's, it's yeah. dense yeah. and it's amazing <laughs> please read it it's it's great great commentary there's probably numerous things in there that would get me cancelled i think as i was writing it i was like i just don't care like i'm just gonna write yeah. truthfully and like if a bunch of cunts want to try and cancel me who yeah. gives a shit like yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it's like, yeah. Just, you know I, I, I'm just putting my heart on the page and just doing whatever I want. I think it's important no, you, as an artist, like you two with Dog mm -hmm. Biscuits, like you could tell it was unfiltered and uncensored and that's yes. what people liked about it. That's art. That's art. It, art comes from like earthiness, like coming coming from like you came out of the earth and the art comes out of the earth too. And if you're making art just minus your earthiness and just only in the internet sphere, your art is going to suck. Yeah. Like just the internet commentary, like poisoning your brain and just making art from that that point. Like the art is gonna fucking suck. Yeah. Nobody's gonna like it. They're gonna pretend to like it because they think they should. There's a lot of fear and conformity going yes, around. It's pure but, fear. So I didn't really talk about that. I just, you know, I criticized a lot of things that I probably mm -hmm. shouldn't have criticized if I wanted no, to try and be nice. Yeah, you fuck absolutely it. Should've. You know, fuck it. And people enjoyed it. And if mm -hmm. people don't, that's okay. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. I understand that's your thing, but you know, I'm not going to let you censor me. No, right. uh, everything that you said in the in the director's commentary and through through Crisis Zone, like I I believe you're extremely qualified to comment on all of these social things that are happening right now because you're somebody that dresses in drag and you have gender dysphoria yeah. and you experience these things and you are extremely qualified to comment on them and if somebody disagrees with that then they're they're wrong it's always a personal thing an exploration mm -hmm. you know, everyone's different everyone goes through things so yeah yeah i had fun making all like making fun of the purity teens and all yeah. that you know, the purity mm -hmm. culture on the twitter and it's so weird. I, I just, it's so weird. It's so dogmatic. Yeah, it's trying to control what people do and trying to mm -hmm. soften things. And I want people to think. I want people to be challenged. Yeah. And not everything in Crisis Zone was my opinion. It's, it's devil's yeah. advocate. It's like it's presenting different ideologies and battle with each other. And I, I want people to think and like, mm -hmm. oh, and even if they're offended, like, you know, be offended. Like, yeah. stew on that. Marinate. Like, mm -hmm. ugh. Yeah, it's getting real weird out there. Well, the, the people are starting to confuse the purpose of art nowadays to be um, as a as like a, a vehicle for 
for bringing their own beliefs to other people and for those people to absorb those beliefs instead of just like experiencing other lives and experiencing other experiences which is to me that's the that's the purpose of art is like to expand your mind instead of just confirm your own beliefs yeah yeah, no, there's, there's way too much like just bland activism in comics right now and, yeah. and all art. Just it's like, yeah, don't tell me what to think. Like, let me think mm-hmm. about it. Exactly. Exactly. I, I may agree with you, but if you mm-hmm. do it in this way that tries to beat me over the head with it and make me feel like a fuckhead, and mm-hmm. it's like, no, I don't, I don't enjoy that. I, I want it to be subtle. Exactly. I, I want to have some autonomy in my thought. Yeah. yeah. The, and, the best liter, the best classic liter, literature that there is just presents situations to people where they can form their own thoughts about it and that's that's the purpose of that and that's what's beautiful about literature instead of just saying this is what you should believe and then the people being like yes this is what i should believe yeah and just for talking about this we're cancelled probably oh yeah exactly (laughs) yeah our careers are over yep yeah but you know, but that's the thing. I'm I'm self-employed as well. Like I don't work for a yeah. boss. I, I I can write what I want. I can make the art that pleases me and that I think is interesting. I don't have to worry. I, mm-hmm. I feel bad for people that are stuck in like the you know Hollywood studio system or you know big publishers and they they, they can't. They're not free to, to make mistakes. We need to be free to make mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Without having like our our entire lives and everything we've accomplished cancelled. Um, yeah. Anyway, enough about the old cancel culture. It doesn't exist, apparently. Um, apparently, it doesn't exist. It, it doesn't exist. Like people, <laughs> people bounce back. Well, Lu- Lucy K is is touring again. He's thriving. But he's thriving, but in like <laughs> these weird, like small small towns that nobody's ever heard of. He's going on. He touring. plays all of his alt right gigs. He's loving it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which like it's kind of <laughs> unfortunate because he probably doesn't believe in that shit. But it's like his actions brought him to the point that that's the only audience he can get so i i don't even want to imagine what he's going through i mean i I was offended by some of his recent sets like not offended but i was just i thought it was tired he was doing stuff about like just stereotype stuff and just like it there didn't seem to be a lot of nuanced commentary like before there. he was cancelled or after no after canceled. like he did a okay. set that was like, I haven't heard anything roundly like criticized he was talking about like penis sizes of different races and it was just, oh like, it was like this is just okay like, so he is kind of pandering to that one i don't know if it was the point he was trying to make but it came off as tired and hacky and just like, yeah I, I was just like eh, I'm, I'm offended as like a comedian it yeah. just wasn't funny. Right. But then right. He, he made a few other jokes that I was fucking laughing my fucking ass off. Yeah. And I was like, it was the one about like being canceled. He was like, what are you going to do next? Like take my fucking birthday away from me? <laughs> and I was like, that's fucking yeah. great. That's a great fucking joke. Yeah. 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 You, you can dislike people and like people at the same time. People are complicated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you, can, you can, you can like enjoy a piece of art. Right, right now I'm reading um, Zorba the Greek the novel and there are some extremely heavy misogynist overtones in this book but i'm still i'm still able to i'm still able to enjoy the story like i i i don't like read that and suddenly become like a misogynist like i can i can enjoy the art and like like acknowledge that there's some misogyny there but still like like absorb what was what i intended to absorb out of the story you know yeah it's a complicated (laughs) world it is complicated and art is complicated and it's supposed to be complicated and you're supposed to feel conflicted ideally when you yeah exactly ideally you're not supposed to come out of it feeling smug and like (laughs) like like vilified oh i feel so validated yeah exactly exactly um one one question that i did have for you that was answered by the director's commentary but i'm gonna ask you anyway um early on or kind of like a quarter of the way through you doing um posting crisis zone you mentioned something about uh a scene that was omitted because jack said it was too hot for tv oh yeah and uh there are a few of those well i believe the one that i was referring to um ended up being the commentary about rupaul's drag race oh yeah that was milk toast that was that yeah. was just a, like a bit of stuff about cancel culture and stuff but right one, one of the main ones i remember is i wanted a mitzi 
Mog's uh, SoundCloud rapper replacement Meg girlfriend mm -hmm. when she met up with Jackson when he was away. Oh right. I right. wanted her to be a pedophile and hit on him because like so many people in SoundCloud rap, mm -hmm. they're like pedos. They're like hitting on kids. So I, I thought oh, wow. that was kind of funny if like Mitzi she's pregnant and she's hitting on this kid. But Jack was like, we're in the kitchen and she goes, you, you can't fucking do that. Like, don't you touch that. And I was like, okay, yeah. like it is a bit too far. Like, you know, and it would make people hate Mitzi. And, you yeah. know, so I didn't do that. Like we had a discussion about it. I was like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. But but still, I, th I still think it's funny. Like, yeah, and it's a commentary on what actually goes on in the SoundCloud rapper world. They're all mm -hmm. fucking hitting on underage girls and stuff. Like, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah. It's been a problem in the music scene forever. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely forever, absolutely. But you, you, you just last year, like everything was so fucking politically divisive and fraught with peril, and just like you know, oh, I don't want to get cancelled, like. Mm -hmm. But you know, I really just didn't try to bother about that. Right. I, I think one of the comics it was like uh, sort of poking fun at Antifa and kind of like you're all whites and like what are you doing yeah. and like yeah, you know, like, what are you doing? Like you're you're making Black Lives Matter look bad and stuff. And then oh man, these, that was a ballsy one to post. All these people are fucking one. angry and like rah rah rah. Mm -hmm. And that was the day I found out my wife was pregnant. Oh, so like it, yes. I just didn't care. It was like well, I'm starting a family, and like I don't give a fuck what you mm -hmm. think. Like, mm -hmm. like fuck you. Like that's a valid fucking criticism. Like you know, it's a, right. it's a thing to think about. Because it was like in Oakland recently, there was like a ton of like ah, but a ton of people like you know like we need safety in the community. A ton of African American people, and there were twelve white activists up the back yelling at them, calling them Uncle Toms. It's like I'm sorry, that's okay. fucking problem with that. That's fucking right. roastable. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. fuck off, you middle class little ponces it, and you fucking is, riot here. Fuck it off. is. A, it seems like it's a like a high class white kid. A little bit, you know. Problem to a degree. Yeah, you know, and there's people tutting in the background right now, like, oh, don't talk about it. Mm -hmm, but you mm -hmm. need to be able to talk about this stuff. These are complex issues. And there's a lot of shit going on. And, and yeah, but you know, it's just you can't talk about shit anymore. Exactly. Your satire is like so fucking hard to do. Yep. But you just need to be honest and just fucking explore ideas. If you're wrong, you're wrong. But you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree. You know, going forward, I you know, I, I, you know, I don't even write whatever the fuck I want. You should. Any yeah, any you artist too. should. Like, any you know, artist should. Dog biscuits was exploring all sorts of stuff. Like you, exactly. you, know, you had all these assholes in the comments fucking judging your characters, judging you by oh, proxy. Yeah. Like it was it it was it's traumatizing in a way. It is. These assholes are judging you. I, I've been on the internet since I was 11 years old, and I, I, I thought I'd be ready for the day where I finally had, like, a bunch of attention on, in the spotlight on me and a bunch of people commenting on me on, on what I was doing. And, like, when it finally happened, I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, really hard to deal with people, like, wishing death on characters yeah. whose faults are based on my own faults. Like that, that was really hard to deal with. We're not built to deal with this. The internet is, is just like rotting our brains. Like it's mm -hmm. too much. It's not natural. No, we're supposed to be agrarian and like, you know, just like yeah. singing songs on the loot and hanging mm -hmm. out with our family and mm -hmm. tilling the fields. Like we're not supposed to have news from every single fucking crisis around the world constantly yeah. doom scrolling all this shit it's, yeah it's, our, it's our, too much our brains did not evolve to be able to handle stimulus on this level yeah. like information uh social information there's so much chaos around the world but like my neighborhood here it's like all sorts of different people we're all neighbors we all look out for each other like Mm -hmm. so that's what you need to do just look out for your local community exactly. and just like you know just having all this outside shit pumped in but communities I, are very very important to human nature but then when crisis so, so reveled in that mm -hmm. it, it was this it was all the internet and all the bad news and all the factions and all the crap it was you know so i was engaging with all that i had to to write it and, yeah so yeah we, as humans we drive past a car crash and we have to look we're curious Yes. So, you know, yes. you, you want to look at that shit, but it's just not healthy. You need to keep driving and just focus mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. your That's how it's always family. been too. You know, like it, it, even in the the sixties and seventies, there were, there was shit going on. Always and like, throughout it, the medieval times. Exactly. Caveman and like times. And if if people back then were hyper focused on that shit in the same way that we are able to now, and almost like 
it's almost like we can't resist being hyper focused on that shit because it's all in front of us all day long like twitter like all the all the mm. then everybody throughout all of history would feel the way that we feel now yeah modern society really is rubbish it's mm-hmm. just just awful. yeah it's really awful it's so removed yeah. from our human nature and yeah. from like being of the earth it like it like puts a barrier between us and being of the earth yeah i I, like right now i should be like in a stream somewhere eating berries Mm -hmm. and just like you know thinking about like oh i'll catch some lizards and eat them and like you know start a fire like that's that's what i should be thinking about not like on twitter fucking like oh what's happening halfway across the world and like what's this person saying about me and what's this oh god it can drive you insane it's too much i can't imagine being um any more famous than you already are because there's just so much vitriol yeah. thrown at anybody who has any level of yeah. of image in yeah. front of a bunch of people. It's like just, I, yeah, anything. I, t- I turned down a big TV show last year, and it's like mm-hmm. I'm kind of happy where I am, like a cult kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I have my readership; they buy my yeah. books, they enjoy it. I can afford food and a roof for my baby and my wife and me. But, you know, I see like Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon, like the Rick and Morty guys. Like they have like the QAnon and the left-wing purity teens all calling the pedophiles at the same time and like going after them oh, and just yeah. this constant just aggressive barrage of these insane factions like mm-hmm. it's horrible like yeah you focus and get it's a curse it it's is. a curse to be seen well they've always said yeah. celebrityness is a curse you know it's like right. oh you're rich and you've got your swimming pool and your caviar but but at least in the 60s when you were away from from the paparazzi well, yeah. you were had the privacy of being in your home but now you go onto the internet and you see all these people saying all this horrible shit about you you want the middle ground where mm-hmm. you can just make a living and you can afford your walls and your, your food you know, and, and people generally leave you alone. You, you don't want the swimming pool yeah. and, and the people breaking just enough, your compounds. Just enough to thrive and get by and not, not you don't need to own three houses no. and just, you don't and want always the, be in the spotlight. You don't want the bling ring trying yeah. to like break in and finger bang you in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's not attractive. You right. Know, you right. Want, you want the middle ground. Right. It's, it's a tough balance to strike. Yeah. Yes. I can imagine. I can only uh, imagine. Yeah. One thing I did want to say is that there was a moment while we were both posting in tandem where um, it was kind of a funny moment where um, I was preparing, I had prepared a Blue Lives Matter joke. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was coming up within like five posts. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you posted a Blue Lives Matter joke like right before I was going to and I was like oh my god he's gonna think I copied him oh. no I, I know I know but like in the moment that it happened I was like oh my god what like but but it's like the reason that it happened that way is because we were both at the same time commenting on shit that was going on right in that moment yeah. and it was kind of a funny coincidence that at this at in the same like four days we had both made a similar joke we both live in seattle mm-hmm. yes and, yes yeah we were riffing on what was happening around us mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. blue lives matter rallies and autonomous zones yes exactly so you know, yeah but yeah i mean i think i i probably felt that too i was on twitter and like someone made a joke and like oh i was gonna make a similar joke and, yeah uh-huh. know, it happens all the time yeah but, but know, especially since we both live in the same city and all the shit was going on at the same time like yeah uh, shit just kept like lining up and I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. But we still did very different things. Like, yes. You know, the crisis yes. Zone, I feel, was like some bullshit South Park crap. And like, <laughs> you know, you know to, to be derogatory to my own work, but yours was more rooted in like a real relationship and stuff. Like, I feel there was more of a sort of a personal touch to like Gussie and Rosie's like relationship. And you, you covered yeah. all the pandemic, all the chaos shit, but there was this real heart to it. Oh. Well, I think there was a heart to yours too because uh, I was just thinking yesterday about how like being crude can only work if it comes from a genuine place. And yeah. I, I've over over the last however however many years, there's been a lot of art that's come out that has attempted to be like crude, and you and it doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't land right because the people that are making this art like don't come from like poverty or they don't. They haven't like experienced that that like real like crude yeah. 
the grit. Crude reality, the, the grit, grit. The yeah. grit. Yeah. And like you can just tell from from your work that it comes from a real place. So your work is crude, but there is a heart to it, and there is there are moments where it does it's like touching because because it all comes from a sincere place. It's all from the yeah. same sincere place. It, it's not like it's not like this touching moment doesn't is incongruous with this crude moment. They they are congruous because they all come from the same sincere place. And yeah, life is disgusting. We're all these like, exactly. weird sexual meat sacks shoving meat into our rot holes. <gasps> exactly, exactly. Yeah. It it more it more resembles reality than than some of the art that's being made right now that attempts to be sanitized and clean and perfect and extremely moral like mm. that's not based in reality but yeah, your, no, work is, not. your work it's is not very based in reality oh yeah i think so life is disgusting and hard like in the lower classes and like, mm -hmm. you know like i grew up around like you know junkies bikers murderers crazy criminals like you know that's that's, that's, that's real this disgusting weird shit and, and you know crisis zone there was a there was heart in it, in like Al, like dealing with Werewolf Jones's children. And you know, at the time, I was like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to be a father. And I was thinking about that, and like, you know, so that that kind of bled into it. Al yeah. trying to look after, you know, Desi and, and Jack because they had to change their names. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. You know, it was, you know, there was heart to it, but also it was like balls to the walls, disgusting. And right. I, I feel like a lot of people will see the disgusting stuff and kind of write it off, but. Yeah. I, I feel like dog biscuits just seems classier in a way. Like if I compare them side by side, like yeah. the relationship stuff in dog biscuits was classier than Christ's own. And mine was a bit more South Park and like, oh, I'm a centrist. I'm going to make fun of everyone. Oh, uh, well, I must admit that that's because uh, partially because I'm, I would feel a little bit more vulnerable, like making fart or anus jokes. Yeah. For, for who I am, like not not that that shit like doesn't apply to my human, like horrible life, like <laughs> you know, but like I don't know, I I just feel like you it just you're just more natural about it than I than I would be. Yeah, I, I like the the Forbes review of Crisis and kind of like warning I people. Read it yet. I was kind of warning people off it, like just like it's really disgusting. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and so yeah. you, you know, it makes fun of like right wingers and left wingers, but it's just like it's like sexually free in a way. Like yeah. Were Werewolf Jones is just shoving so many objects up inside. Himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the culture we live in with the OnlyFans, and you know, and all the. Mm -hmm. You know, I just saw today actually. On yes, I was going to bring this up. They're mm -hmm. shutting down the the pornographic stuff. Yeah, it's going, it's going softcore. Yeah, boom. What are, what are they why would they it's like when tumblr got rid of the porn the only yeah. the only reason i was going on tumblr in like 2017 was to jack off <laughs> and, yeah. and then they got rid of that and it's like why would it go on tumblr now it's just a like hardcore like weird politics and like kids moaning about steven universe like i can't yeah. masturbate to this so, and, yeah. and i don't understand how only fans is planning to pivot to any anything else but sex work. Like, whole, I don't understand. Their whole business model is people shoving things in their holes. Yeah. Like I, I just I don't understand why they would you know there's morality suddenly. I like, guess oh. they're gonna try to like pivot to re uh, cooking, cooking and recipes and like art and I don't know. I yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm just it's just very imagining. Odd. But they they're, they're gonna plummets in popularity like you know only fans is known for people shoving that's things what they, in their that's what they're known for that's what they do it's dildo town exactly it's a person in their room shoving weird objects inside their cavities like that's that's why people do it yeah. exactly i'm going to pivot to something that's not related to this at all but yeah, uh, good <laughs> but um i must admit that a certain way through crisis zone as you were posting it on the internet i started sensing fatherly like fatherly yes. uh sense to the way you were going with the art before i even knew that you were going to be a dad well as i said earlier yeah i mean like, like al mm -hmm. being a daddy and yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. exactly yeah. like when yeah. when owl started to uh to have more of a fatherly sense towards uh yeah. jackson and that, this, that was something I was already planning for, like, regular canon Megan Mog. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, oh, 
Oh, the, okay. The start of the pandemic, I was going to start Meg's Carbon, the follow up to Bad Gateway, and I had like, like you know, like five books planned in that series, and yeah. and you know, Werewolf Jones readers that are the close to the series, they know that Werewolf Jones is going to die at some point. So Al yeah. was going to sort of take over as a father figure. And I kind of okay. blew my load in Crisis Zone. I was like, you know, well, I kind of want to do this progression of Al being a father figure to the kids. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to have this kind of engaged audience ever again. So let's do the whole Al kind of being a father to Jackson and Diesel thing. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. Susan, uh, Werewolf Jones's wife. I, yeah. I, I didn't, she was going to debut in Meg's Coven, but I was like, oh, right. let's, let's put her in Crisis Zone. Like, mm-hmm. again, like, is anyone ever going to give a shit after this? Mm-hmm. Let's bring in Susan. You know, I had her in the balaclava, so you couldn't see her face. Yeah. Uh huh. You know, I showed her wolf form and. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still holding on to a lot of surprises, like in other characters for Meg's Coven and like, and things will play out differently because it's like a different kind of chronology. Like, yeah. But I, I, I did kind of blow my load in a way and kind mm-hmm. of throw out ideas that I was holding on to for my original yeah. canon. Yeah. But, you know, I was like, fuck it, let's just do it. You know? Oh, well, I, you know, I kind of feel like it was a, a once in a lifetime situation where it's like we're at the beginning of a pandemic. I don't know if we're ever going to feel that moment ever again, yeah. even though we're probably going to be going through this pandemic for the rest of our lives. I don't know. But <laughs> just the, newness of the, the newness of the pandemic was like just a perfect moment to, to have this story come out. Yeah. Captive and audience, emotions running high. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So it's kind of like you threw, you threw some things out that maybe you were saving for later, but maybe it worked out. In yeah, your favor, I guess. I think I think it made the story more sensational. Yeah, you know, I tried to do a happy ending at the end. It was like you know, Al had the kids and he was trying to be a good right. dad, and and mm-hmm. they bought the house. Like they got a bit of money. Like to me, that was a happy ending in like the world. Like you've got yeah. you've got your little plot of land, you've got your little family, mm-hmm. and you just like ride it out until the end, until the bombs start dropping. Just and watch, watching starts. the world end outside of your window, but yeah. inside everything is everything's okay inside. Mm-hmm. Like you mm-hmm. know, you can't worry about everyone else. You yeah. have to worry about yourself and your your immediate surrounding and your family, and take care of take care of that first. That's a good moral to just spread throughout yeah. people now because, like, it's so easy to feel the weight of the world on yeah. your shoulders now and to feel like you're responsible for all the decay of the modern world. But you you can really only do what you can yeah. and take we're, care of yourself. We're getting way too fucking close to the Jordan Peterson <laughs> clean your own room first uh, <laughs> ideology. Way too close. We, uh-huh. are, we are so cancelled. Oh, uh-oh. What disgusting pieces of shit we are. Oh, yes, my, I, we are. I'm going to get my cat of nine tails out and just, like, self-flagellate myself. <laughs> like, like, bad. Bad. How dare you take care of yourself and your family before you start, like, Worrying about everybody else and in the give, whole give, fucking world. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this uh, pers- this person who is unnamed is yeah. such a good uh, Some, studio. Someone person. in the chat on Facebook, who's being very kind to you right now, was like, "Someone needs to give Alex a refill," and I just like, oh, that's, oh, so that's nice. so nice. That is so nice. So they I saw- can't take boyfriend Ooh. credit. Yeah, what, I hope, what, they, I hope what, they didn't see me spill everywhere just now. What am I over here? Fucking chopped liver? <laughs> yeah, look at Simon. Dry. You want a you want a cider? I got a cider in the fridge. If you could, well, if, yeah, if you yeah. don't, wouldn't mind grabbing my cider. That's awesome. No, you're good. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, uh, <laughs> what I would like to know is how do you think that being a father will affect the way that you produce art or come towards art, or will it will it at all? No, it will. I mean, I I, I can't work to the same capacity I once did. Like I was saying earlier, right. like I was, I've always tried to balance being an insane workaholic with being a present spouse. Mm-hmm. And now I, you know, being a dad's really hard. Being a parent, like, you know, I, I, I'm moving soon. You know, I'm just getting a new setup. I'll have a new studio set up. But, you know, I'll get, like, you know, four or five days a week of, like, business hours. Just, like, you know, nine to five. Yeah. But in the mm-hmm. night, I'm going to be very present. And the, the weekends, no work. Like, that's just for yeah. hanging out with my kid and that's family good. and just having a good time. Like, it's just compartmentalizing. But, yeah, I, that, that, yeah. I'm, I'm almost 40. That part of my life is over of being, mm-hmm. you know, the Red Bull chugging, 
insane mentalist drawing all day, breaking their body, staring at the moon, screaming at the moon. Yeah. Oh, I'm an artist. Yeah. It's yeah. over. It's I have responsibilities now. I have someone else to worry about. Yeah. And I love my kids so fucking much. Like I just, she breaks my heart. Her, her, her beauty and just sort of smiling at me. It's oh. she's she gets me high. Like she's like the the best fucking drug you can do. Just like wow. being a fucking parent. It's that's that's my that's main go, that's my main thing. That's what I'm into now. And that's you know, great. comics was always my outlet. It was is the way I, I dealt with everything and I processed everything and I I, esca- I escaped into it. But now I, I just I just want to be like the best parent I can be. You know, it's such a cliche. You have a kid and everything changes, but it's true. You just you stare into their, sense. you stare into their fucking eyes and yeah. You know, if you make that choice and you fucking do it, and you, you have mm-hmm. to be prepared before you fucking do it. You can't you go in it. like a fucking wanker. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, it'll be fine. Like, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. You have to be set up, and you got to fucking like know you're gonna fucking do a good job. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I got all or my. Don't do it. Yeah, I got everything in a row, and I like made sure it was the time, and it's it's fucking beautiful. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I'll draw a bit less. You know, like that. You know, and that that's hard to transition into that, to knowing like I can't. A yeah, part of myself has died. Like, yeah. There, there's a Bill Callahan song that I smog. I don't know if you know Bill Callahan from Smog. He had a yeah. song recently, Son of a Sea, and it's just like, you know, yeah, I love Bill giving songs. birth almost killed me. You know, some say I died, and all that survives is my lullaby. And it's just, ah, oh, yeah, uh, like, yeah, Bill. Like, it is. It's like, it's like I've died in a way, and I've become someone yeah. new, and all that has mm-hmm. survived is my lullabies. Mm-hmm. And it's, I love that. Mm-hmm. And there's renovations constantly and i'm just quoting his lyrics now but i yeah. love bill callahan i love smog uh, i love yeah. his earlier misogynistic <laughs> material and i love his new family man material i love it all oh i had no idea bill yeah. callahan had misogynistic material i would love to <laughs> dig into that well yeah <laughs> this, <that's>, um... <laughs> we're getting to the end yeah, of the show sure, sure. so we should take some questions from the audience oh, yeah. absolutely I, I'll stop talking about Bill Callahan and his old misogynist face. Yeah, be, 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 be Hit is a great song that every girl I've ever loved has wanted to be hit. I've been with many partners who've wanted to be hit, and it's like, I don't want to hit you. Like, I, I don't want to, I, I'll try it, I guess, but I don't want to do this. Like, yeah. On that note, questions from the audience. On that note, yeah. <laughs> audience questions. All right, that's a great note to start questions on. Um, first question is from Ashley, who asks, do you use anything external to help you get into the zone to get your work done? Smart drugs, Soylent, podcast, tra- trance music, or hot sauce, or whatever it is that you use. Yeah, I, I, when, I, when I did, uh, when I remember when I did Bad Gateway, my 2019 book, I, I listened to the Charlie Brown Christmas album on loop for like six months. Uh, that's all I listened to, and it kind of drove wow. me insane. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do music generally. Just you know, just mm-hmm. I, I like repetitive television shows that I've seen like a hundred times before. So it's not distracting, but it's kind of gets you know, it's entertaining enough, but it's not going to distract you. Yeah. And yeah. Red Bull, I love. I'm famous for my love of Red Bull. I love uh, the synthetic uh, caffeine. What's your favorite flavor? Uh, the dragon fruit Red Bull. I think it's mm. gone. I've been addicted to dragon fruit Red Bull. I, I quit for a while, but I got back onto it when I was finishing up Crisis Zone. And I went to the fucking Red Apple and there was no dragon fruit Red Bull. I think they've gotten rid of it. It was the summer edition. I'm, oh, I'm really tragic. upset. I don't want to go back to tropical or peach. I, I love <laughs> them, but the dragon fruit was like... Do you the, drink it in the morning or in the middle of the day or...? A, either or. Yeah, I'll, okay. wake, I'll wake and bake with some Red Bull. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about you? What are you, you what are your external things? Are you, are you doing a bunch of pills? Uh, coffee, are you coffee. Dancing? Bit of heroin. Or? I do some some uh, head shop drugs. Oh, uh, oh, I remember. Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, and you, Kratom. Yeah, before um, before dog biscuits. The, yeah. Uh, the previous this, this never happened. I yeah. depicted myself constantly going to the Kratom store yes. to buy a Kratom. Yeah. And, I, and I, I still, I still do it. I used to fuck with that shit in the past. You did? Yeah. Okay. Like in my twenties. What did you think of it? It was all right. It's yeah, a, it is all right. It's, See, it's not like. It's not like like amazing. It's fine. It's like taking a second coffee of yeah. the day. It, like I take yeah. a coffee in the morning and then I take a second coffee at like four twenty every day. And it's like yeah, it can't compete with an eight ball. I mean, you know. yeah, it's like it's like a one tenth of what an eight ball. What like yeah. a, 
a line of coke is. But you it's know, fine. It, it's okay. It got me through that second push of the dog biscuits pages. Yeah, I'm mostly on the coffee these days. I've got a little Nespresso machine, and it's you know a bit yeah. healthier. But I got back on the Red Bulls, but I've got to get off them. I really, my whole family is like, get the fuck off the Red Bull. What, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's how my heart sounds. It's not a Red Bull. <laughs> Uh, right good stuff good stuff um miguel asks was it hard titling crisis zone any other cool names that you eventually scraped off oh miguel uh good question i think i just i think it was crisis zone from the get-go which I, I write in the commentary that i realized that another cartoonist called a book crisis zone but uh I was like, oh, no, I feel bad now. Because, like, oh, I stole that guy's title. But then I realized there was a video game called Crisis Zone when I Googled it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, fuck that guy then. He's got no fucking ownership to it. It's a fucking <laughs> video game from the 90s or yeah, something. Yeah, he stole it from them. And then yeah. he stole it from them. Or so, so exactly. You know, it was, it was mine to steal. So, you know, now I'm just totally, you know, it's ubiquitous with me now. I mean, even that video game, they're probably like, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, like Simon Hansel has taken it. <laughs> now we're screwed. Yeah. Well, what about you with dog biscuits? I mean, did, early uh, on, it's like dog biscuits. I, I mean, I mean, there's probably a zillion dog biscuits recipe books that there are, but there are no comics called dog biscuits. Yeah, I mean, from the first episode, Gussie, you know, it mm -hmm. opens up Gussie's dog biscuits. Stores, yeah, I was so. actually reading Factotum by Charles Bukowski at work. Um, I was working in a restaurant and I was like, I'm sick of sitting here reading this. I just grabbed a piece of printer paper from the office and I drew six, six boxes and I just drew a dog biscuits uh, storefront in the, in the first panel, just because it was a paragraph in the, not that like I was continuing the story of the Bukowski <laughs> or anything. It's just because <laughs> he mentioned the word dog biscuits in that, in that sentence. And that's all yeah so it sounds like we both just snap that's exactly the, that's the fucking title everything is derivative in a, in a way yeah don't even think about it just bam that's the yeah, title. yeah exactly it's best not to get bogged down thanks Mikkel. Love <laughs> good one um all right whitney asks and this sounds like a question for both of you can you all talk about relatability in comics it has become an issue in the comments comments for both comics fans reacting personally about they would or what they would or wouldn't do in the character situations. This was particularly bad and misogynistic in Alex's Instagram comments during Dog Biscuits. Were you all surprised by this? Will that experience change how or where you post comics in the future? Hmm. Well, I, I guess I'll go this. first because, yeah. uh, well, uh, I, I think relatability is a non-issue when you're making art. I don't think art needs to be relatable in the slightest. I think art should be made from the heart, and that's the first, first and only place that it should be made from. Relatability should never enter the equation. Whether it becomes relatable afterward is fine or not fine. It, it doesn't need to be relatable. I think it's important that it's not relatable at times. And um, for people to vilify the fact that it's not relatable, I think it's kind of veering towards the wrong wrong direction yeah, as far as like art culture they're just projecting their own bullshit onto the character exactly exactly and, and i think the more you explore the id and like the stuff that you shouldn't say and shouldn't think that's relatable like mm -hmm. then the more personal you exactly. are and the more horrible that's relatable you know mm -hmm. you don't want to try and sanitize it and like worry about what the audience will think like fuck the audience if they yeah. enjoy it great but uh, you can't stress about them. Like, they can go fuck themselves. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 I think... Oh, fuck you all. Fuck off. <laughs> it, hey! Uh, something that we all share as human beings is that none of us are perfect. Everybody yeah. is completely imperfect. Yeah. And to, like, approach art in a way that I'm perfect and this art isn't perfect is so fucking stupid. Yeah. It's just, like, so fucking stupid. I hate it. Yeah. You're not perfect. You're never going to be perfect. Sing it, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen to me. Gay man. <laughs> right. Well, I think both of you are perfect. Just saying. Um, oh. I think it's true. Um, it looks like we have time for one more question. I think this is a really good one to end on, which is from Maggie, who asks, Simon, what is one thing I should do, not like learn to laugh, more like eat fries at this one place, 
before I die. What's one thing you should do before you die? Yeah, but not like learn to laugh more, like something good, like where should they eat fries? Uh, do, do DMT. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking yeah. awesome. I hate to sound like Joe Rogan, but do DMT. Yeah. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> All right. All right. No, man, let's go. All right. I'm starting to smoke <laughs> cigars. I got to start cigars. Oh, yeah. Where's my cigar? I got a couple of Cubans. Let's go. We're done. That's our last question. Or we're done. I want to I want to smoke my cigar like Joe Rogan, take it all the way into the lungs and see what happens later. Yeah, we're we're done. Thanks for coming. Get the fuck out of here. Ah, shut it down. Go buy the book. Crisis on dog biscuits. Secret headquarters.